Federal Energy Department wants to ship thousands of truckloads of radioactive waste to Hanford. Most of these will go through Oregon, many of them up I-5 and across 205 to 84. What's the risk? Even if there are no accidents, even if there's never a terrorist attack on these shipments of radioactive waste, some of these shipments are so radioactive, more so than a spent nuclear fuel shipment, that hundreds of people along the truck routes are likely to get cancer just from being exposed to the truckloads of radioactive waste coming through our communities. We are talking about what the Energy Department calls greater than Class C waste, which is a fancy word for hotter than spent nuclear fuel. So hot that you cannot shield the radiation on it and move the truck and keep radiation from coming through. So you've got to reduce the lead shielding to move the truck. And what happens is that there's radiation dose that will occur to people all along the truck route. The Energy Department did a study a few years ago when it was proposing to ship high-level nuclear waste to Hanford. And it estimated that if it shipped that high-level nuclear waste to Hanford, 816 adults along the truck route would die from cancer. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but I have children. And I'm more concerned about their exposure than my own exposure when we're stuck in traffic or it goes by the front door of their school. Children are three to ten times more susceptible to get cancer and die from the same exposure as an adult. So remember, the Energy Department's own estimate was 816 adults would die from exposure to the spent nuclear fuel along the truck route even if there is no accident, no terrorist attack. But as this picture shows, sometimes we have accidents. This is an actual picture of nuclear waste truck en route to Richland, Washington, which tried to go over Emigrant Pass in the snow outside of LeGrand a few years ago. You can see the cab is going the wrong way from the truck. That's what happens sometimes when you ship thousands of truckloads of radioactive waste. What happens if there's an accident that involves a fire, though, and one of these highly radioactive waste shipments that the Energy Department wants to send to Hanford? What if that fire occurred as part of an accident at the intersection of I-205 and 84 in Portland is what we asked independent nuclear physicists to look at. They took the Energy Department's own models of what happens in the event of an accident with a fire or a terrorist attack on a shipment of highly radioactive plutonium chemical wastes at I-205 and I-84. They modeled it using the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's own modeling parameters with prevailing wind conditions, and the result is an estimate that 300 square miles of Portland would have to be evacuated. There would be a thousand cancer deaths. After, as people of Fukushima have discovered, after a nuclear accident, there's no going back. You can't decontaminate the homes, the businesses. It's a risk we can never afford to have. So why are we moving radioactive wastes unnecessarily? Why are we going to bear that risk of shipping thousands of truckloads of waste through Portland, I-84, or downtown Spokane to be dumped at Hanford, adding to the problems already at Hanford? And think about this. Please come to the hearings to oppose use of Hanford as a national radioactive hazardous waste dump because we don't want our children to be exposed to those thousands of shipments of radioactive waste. Do it for them. And do it for the next hundred generations who will have to drink the contaminated groundwater and 
live with the contamination that will flow into the Columbia River if we allow more waste to be dumped at Hanford.